We now know that it was not sin or evil that brought on the Black Death. It was a contagious disease. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 banned weapons too cruel for modern warfare. And who knows what the long-term health effects might be for those exposed to the cloud. For this list, we'll be looking at items that were so brutal or deadly that people pushed for them to be removed from international arsenals. While some of these weapons are still utilized by certain countries, we'll include entries that have been heavily banned around the world. Did we ban any weapons from this list? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Blinding Laser Weapons Although sci-fi movies have made the prospect of using weapons that rely on lasers look cool for decades, the reality is much more sobering. In the real world, there was a huge physical concern. Several countries became concerned that soldiers would use laser weapons to significantly reduce or permanently eliminate an enemy's ability to see. Not only is it a safety issue, but it's actually a federal offense. To prevent this from happening, over 100 countries agreed to the protocol on blinding laser weapons. This was a rare occasion where the ban was preventative instead of being introduced after people had suffered side effects. While some experts think the danger of similar weapons still remains, this agreement was still seen as a major victory. Number 9. Expanding and Explosive Small Artillery In 1868, delegates from most major European powers and the Ottoman Empire met in St. Petersburg, Russia, to talk about a potentially horrific subject. Several countries had started using bullets that explode on impact. In the St. Petersburg Declaration, the nations present decided that explosive rounds shouldn't be smaller than 400 grams. For reference, that's about the size of a Coke can. A similar issue arose in 1899. Expanding bullets, which were also nicknamed dum-dum rounds, do exactly what their original name suggests when they hit an enemy. The resulting wounds tended to be larger and more debilitating. Dum-dums, yeah. Would you like some of these dum-dums? I know I shouldn't, uh, but I will. While the Haag Convention of 1899 pushed to prevent expanding bullets in war, the rounds are still used by hunters and law enforcement today. Number 8. Weapons that leave behind non-detectable fragments In modern warfare, a soldier may be at risk of leaving the battlefield with pieces of artillery or explosive weapons inside of them. Traditionally, the fallout from these injuries could be seen on an x-ray. But developments in warfare led to the creation of weapons that could produce undetectable fragments such as plastic. Not only would these items cause serious physical damage, but soldiers could get nasty infections too. And since the fragments can't typically be picked up on standard x-rays, finding and extracting it could be nearly impossible. All of these negatives led to what's known as Protocol 1 of the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons. It prohibits weapons where the primary effect is to produce undetectable fragments. Number 7. Landmines I'm heading toward the landmines! Landmines have existed in various forms for centuries. In that time, they've gone from being a disruptive and unreliable tool to becoming a modern plague. Not only are dozens of countries around the world littered with them, but 80% of victims are civilians. Mines can also stay undetected for years and cause indiscriminate damage. For these reasons and more, there was a large push to completely remove the explosive weapons from the battlefield in 1997. Under international law, when mines are laid, they must be mapped, so they can be removed safely at a later date. All too often, they're not mapped, or maps are lost, and the process of demining can be a slow and dangerous one. However, big world powers like the United States and Russia chose not to sign at the time. The policy surrounding mines is still contentious to this day. Modern conflicts like the Russian invasion of Ukraine had only sparked more discussions about the continued use of these explosives. Number 6. Cluster Bombs Cluster bombs are a particularly nasty form of warfare. They are shot from the ground by artillery or dropped by planes. As the name suggests, cluster munitions open mid-air and split into multiple smaller bombs. They open in mid-air, dispensing hundreds of submunitions, or bomblets, over an area roughly the size of a football field. One of the main determining factors for a weapon ban is the question, does this weapon kill indiscriminately? Um, now, the back part of it is where the engine fuel goes and the motor. And what happens when these things fly over, the front part explodes and scatters all the little munitions, and then the back part actually continues flying and lands. With cluster bombs, the answer is doubly yes. 
The widespread use of cluster bombs makes civilian deaths all but inevitable. Hundreds of bomblets spread out over the hit zone, and activists say over 90% of cluster bomb deaths are civilian. A ban for them was put forward at a 2008 convention. At the time, over a dozen nations still refused to remove cluster bombs from their arsenal. Number 5. Poisoned Weapons Historic accounts suggest that people have been using poisoned weapons as early as 300 BC. You see, it's another blade design for delivering poison. Eventually, these vicious weapons became employed in war. Depending on the poison, victims could be forced to endure a lot of agony or even die. One of the oldest weapon bans in human history actually prohibited poison bullets. And just a small amount of venom in an open wound is enough to kill a man if he's... Albert! He's dead. He... you did it. In 1675, a war between France and the Holy Roman Empire ended with the Strasbourg Agreement. The two nations also agreed to prohibit the use of poisoned bullets in future battles. That extended to the rest of the world with the 1907 Haag Convention. Number 4. Incendiary Weapons Fire has been weaponized for as long as there has been war. In ancient times, it was employed through the use of hot pitch, oil, and resin. Flammable material was affixed to projectiles, used to soak pre-prepared ground, or even dumped directly on the enemy. But fire is an unbearably painful weapon that is not always easily controlled. In modern times, incendiaries evolved into firebombs, napalm, and flamethrowers. You smell that? Napalm, son! Nothing else in the world smells like that! I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Napalm and flamethrowers in civilian areas were banned in Protocol 3 to the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons. But it doesn't exactly ban using fiery weapons on soldiers and vehicles. Additionally, incendiary weapons like white phosphorus are still deployed in conflicts all over the world. Number 3. Poison Gas and Certain Chemical Weapons Technically speaking, poison gas was part of the 1907 ban on poisoned weapons. But that didn't stop either side from employing gas bombs during World War I. The effect of gas was similar to uh, drowning. It took off the lining of the lung. The results were horrific. Chlorine and mustard gases were used to deadly effect. During the conflict, approximately 1.3 million casualties were caused by chemical agents. In time, international officials saw the agonizing physical pain and long-term neurological damage firsthand. That I was looking through green glasses. At the same time, the gas burnt my throat, caused pains in my chest, and made breathing all but impossible. Public opinion led to a more widespread ban in the 1925 Geneva Protocols. However, Geneva didn't ban weapons development or stockpiling. Chemical weapons were used by the Axis powers in World War II, by Saddam Hussein in Iraq, and Assad in Syria. In 1993, the Chemical Weapons Convention expanded the ban. Most stockpiles have since been destroyed. Any chemical weapon that's lying around poses a huge danger and should be removed as soon as possible. Number 2. Biological Weapons Biological warfare involves weaponizing bacteria and viruses. Those classes of weapons may go down as one of the most dangerous tools of war ever existed. One of the first known uses of biological warfare was the 1346 Siege of Kaffa by the Mongols. In this case, bodies riddled with black death were left in cities. Millions of people ultimately died in the aftermath. British and American soldiers also both gave smallpox blankets to indigenous peoples and wrecked entire communities. It just may be the first incident of germ warfare in recorded history. Since biological agents are not easily contained to combatants, they can quickly spread out of control. The 1972 Biological Weapons Convention sought to supplement and reinforce the Geneva Protocols against them. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Dirty Bombs and Salted Bombs The 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine also ignited international discussions about dirty bombs. It's a combination of two things. Firstly, conventional explosives, and secondly, radioactive material. Now that can come from all sorts of places, even hospital equipment. Unlike a nuke, a dirty bomb doesn't actually involve the use of a nuclear explosion. Instead, it essentially consists of dangerous materials wrapped around a conventional explosive. They are designed to indiscriminately spread radiation. You take some radiological material that you can get in a hospital and mix it with a conventional bomb. 
just any kind of conventional explosive. Since there's no real way to control the spread, dirty bombs are an incredibly real threat to civilians. While these terrible weapons are not explicitly banned, international legal experts believe that it would be almost impossible to use one legally. It's the hope of many people around the world that dirty bombs never become regular tools of warfare. How do you assess the risk of something like this? We look at it as a real possibility, and we look at it as being a real possibility every day. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.